Thank you for the invitation to present to Pekka and Highship at the 2021 Global Forum on Mechanical Engineering. Transportation is one of the largest CO2 emitters and it's important to share and discuss various solutions to decarbonize transportation. My name is Stena Watson and my position is CEO at Topeka, a company within the Williamson Group. As a maritime group, we are investigating opportunities for zero emission shipping. First, a few words about Willemsen. Willemsen was founded in Norway back in 1861. Willemsen is now a comprehensive global maritime group, providing essential products and services to the merchant fleet, along with supplying crew and technical management. The Williamson Group is organized in three, three different business divisions. The first leg on the right side is the strategic and financial investment where our existing shipping and logistic activities with ownership in Valenius Williamson and Hyundai Glovis. The second leg on the left side is the Maritime Service Division. And the third leg is the newly formed New Energy Division. This new division has two focus areas, offshore wind and hydrogen value chain. The rationale for establishing these new areas was to address, address the energy transition from fossil fuels to renewables and the hydrogen value chain to decarbonize the shipping industry. Topeka is a part of the new energy division, where our ambition is to build and operate zero emission vessels. Maritime transport is responsible for about 2.5% of global greenhouse gas emission. And these emissions are projected to increase significantly if mitigation measures are not put in place. The International Maritime Organization, IMO, have a stray strategy to reduce CO2 emission per transport work by at least 40% by 2030 and towards 70% by 2050. To be able to meet these targets, there must be an energy transition from today's heavy fuel to other energy carriers. The maritime industry have done a number of energy transitions through the history. Our first vessel in Williamson was a zero emission sail ship before we transitioned into steamship with coal and from there to engine ship with oil. Therefore, we believe that maritime sector could be import an important area to innovate and develop carbon-free energy carriers. Wessel gives great opportunities for testing various solutions. It is possible to install backup powertrains, hybrid solution, and thereby reduce the consequence of technical failure. Vessels have large capacity for carrying various fuels in addition to engineers and other technical personnel, all important in the first innovative phase. We believe that development of carbon-free solution will start with domestic projects, heavily depending on each country's public support and each country's ambitions. In the first phase, there are limitations in regulations and legislation lack of class rules, etc., which makes it difficult to introduce international service, prerequisite global standards. Short distances and fixed schedules is also lower or the barrier for new solutions due to technical risk, limited fuel infrastructure and range limitations. And there from gradually moving towards short sea, development of global standards and class rules, increased availability of bunkering facilities, and finally, deep sea with long-range capacities for ocean crossing. All these well ahead of 2050 if the maritime industry shall meet the climate action target. We have seen the same pattern for all past maritime energy transitions. From sail to the first steamboats with limited coal capacity, due to ineffective steam engines and huge need for bunker coal. And limitations in oil bankering facilities, which was the main hurdle for the first diesel-powered vessels. 
In modern time, we have seen the same development in the transition to LNG-driven vessels. First domestic to prove the technology and with limitations in availability of LNG bunkering facilities. Here illustrated by the Norwegian LNG fueled road ferry Glutra, set in service back in, 20, uh, in year 2000. Very, very short distance and regular and fixed service calling same ports, uh, enabling LNG bunkering. Then gradually larger vessels and longer endurance. Platform supply vessels encouraged by the oil companies to develop new end use of LNG. Then in 2014, short sea vessels, long range and international class standards. And finally today, where a great number of deep sea vessels are ordered for LNG or LNG hybrid solutions. But still after 20 years development, LNG as a fuel is not widely available at all larger ports. Now we see the early phase of the next energy transition from carbon-based fuel to no carbon fuel based on hydrogen. And when we are talking about hydrogen, we include all hydrogen variations. If it's compressed, liquid or treated into ammonia or LOHC. We believe various applications will have various needs and there will be opportunities for all hydrogen variations. And we have the same approach to green or blue hydrogen. There will be need for all clean hydrogen produced as a reasonable cost. Energy transition to hydrogen-based fuels will most likely follow the same development pattern as all other energy transitions in the maritime sector. But hopefully we have learned some lessons enabling to speed up. As we have discussed, it's taken more than 20 years for LNG and we need to cut down the transition time to meet global ambitions. The first uh, vessel under the hydrogen in this slide is the Norwegian road ferry Hydra. It's a LH2 battery hybrid set in service in this fall. The Norwegian road, road authorities has utilized the purchasing power to challenge the maritime industry to develop new solutions. LNG back in year 2000, hydrogen in 2021, and in between, they also encouraged the first battery electric ferry Ampere back in 2014. And the second vessel on this slide under hydrogen is the Topeka High Ship hopefully set in service in 2024. With the Topeka High Ship project, we are trying to utilize experience from early uh, energy transitions. The project is covering fuel production, fuel distribution, and end user vessels, and therefore, and thereby hopefully avoiding the chicken egg dilemma, which has slowed down the LNG rollout. And very essential, the Topeka High Ship is not a research pilot, but it's a full-scale commercial maritime service, covering a real transportation need for the oil and gas supply chain on the west coast of Norway. The service is linking supply bases and ports between Mongstad in north and Stavanger in south in the weekdays, and including Kristiansund in the weekends. Currently, most of the cargo uh, today is transported by a truck. And the cargo owners are demanding high frequency and regularity. Therefore, we need to build two vessels for the service, enabling daily departure in both directions. The vessels fueled by liquid hydrogen is designed by LMG Marine. This is an experienced designer for low and zero emission solutions including the hydrogen ferry Hydra shown on the earlier slide. We have prioritized fast and efficient terminal operation. Therefore, we are only utilizing the main deck for cargo. Efficient port operation enable the service speed to be limited at only 12 knots or even lower. And the power demand is approximately two megawatt. 
In total, we are planning to install 3 MW PEM fuel cells on the vessels. The LH2 tank's capacity to close to 100 cubic meters allow the vessel to sail for two days between bunkering. It's not easy to see maybe on the drawing, but all hydrogen equipment from the storage tank to the vaporizer and to the fuel cells are in open space at upper deck. This is to avoid any hydrogen trapped, if any leakage occur. The zero emission range for Topeka High Ship will be approximately 400 nautical miles, which is a major step on a road to achieve zero emission solutions for log larger applications and deep sea vessels. We will also install a backup diesel generator to secure redundancy. The fuel will be delivered by Aurora. This is a partnership between Equinor, BKK and Air Liquid. They are developing a liquefaction plant at Mongsta. This is a small plant to establish the first complete supply chain for LH2 from production through logistic to end user. And thereby a full scale demonstration of liquid hydrogen as maritime fuel. The Liquid hydrogen production capacity would be ramped up to meet further market demand. And the factory will be located next door to Monster Supply Base, Equinor's main port for serving the oil and gas installations in the North Sea. At the same time, Equinor, the main oil company in Norway, will be the most important cargo owner for the Topeka service. The Topeka vessels shall also be used to distribute hydrogen as a cargo from production sites to hydrogen terminals at supply bases and ports. We believe that ISPS controlled ports is well arranged to be hydrogen hubs with established security system and port operators trained for handling dangerous goods. There are several projects for green and blue, compressed and liquid hydrogen within the Topeka service area. Hopefully the Topeka vessels can provide safe and emission-free logistic connecting hydrogen producers and hydrogen end users in this first development phase. So we plan to develop flexible hydrogen hubs at the supply bases controlled by Williamson Group with depot for storing hydrogen and bunkering arrangement for vessels and filling stations for trucks and buses. The hydrogen volumes will be transported on Topeka and stored at the terminals. In the first phase, we plan to use the same containment through the supply chain from the factory to the end user, ISO containers or tank trailers. One, ma one major challenge has been to develop bunkering solutions. As shown on an earlier slide, all the hydrogen equipment on the vessel is located on upper deck, approximately 50 meters above key level. For security reasons, we have decided not to have any bunkering lines on board the vessel. Hence, the bunkering port need uh, to, to provide a bunkering tower with lines connecting directly to the vessel's fuel tank. By this, all need for cooling and flushing of the cryogenic hydrogen lines will be at the bunkering port and not a part of the vessel operation. Topeka Base to Base is the high ship demonstration vessels where Willemsen is the coordinator. High ship is a, high, is a fuel cell and hydrogen joint undertaking project under the EU Horizon 2020 program. The object is to get a better understanding of opportunities and document liquid hydrogen feasibility as a fuel. Here under security issues, social acceptance, etc. In addition to the Topeka base to base vessel or the high ship project looking into technical solutions for liquid hydrogen in other vessel types as well from larger vessels with 
20 megawatts installation to smaller inland water vessels. And within the High Ship Consortium, there are 16 different institutions and companies cooperating to develop commercial full-scale zero-emission cargo ships to demonstrate and document that liquid hydrogen is one possible solution to decarbonize the shipping industry. And this slide shows the timeline. Uh, Topeka has been awarded investment support from the Norwegian government in addition to the EU high ship. And the transportation, transportation need between supply bases and Equinor's ambitions to decarbonize the logistic is well documented. The project is now depending on Aurora's final decision to build the LH2 factory at Mongstar. Currently, there are not any LH2 available in Norway. And the liquid hydrogen factory shall take the final investment decision this fall. As soon as possible after positive investment decision, we will start yard tendering and hopefully entering into a shipbuilding contract early next year. The Topeka vessels is planned to be operative from 2024 uh, when the new liquefaction factory starts delivering uh, LH2. We are looking forward to build and operate zero emission LH2 vessels and thereby demonstrate and document one possible carbon-free shipping fuel for the ongoing energy transition. Thank you for listening.